morning, Chavez's Chavez's. Uh, I'm here at DJ Projects. I've got a uh, bearings to look at on a forklift mast, and uh, Mighty White needs a full service oil change, filters, all that for Jazzle. So let's go and have a look at this mast first because he ain't got the bearings yet because he's not sure what size they are. So I might have to take one off. Beautiful little do. Let's get cracked on. Jamie was just showing me what his problem is with his forklift lock. You see in there? There, look, bearings have all gone. That way you can see that. And same with this one here. Well, you can see the ball bearings there, look. The bottom ones, these, there's two rollers at the bottom as well. But they're okay. There, look, they're all right. But obviously the ones at the top are kaput. Jamie's been finding bearings scattered around his workshop, ain't you, Jamie? And now he knows where they're from, these bearings, these rollers. I've just been contemplating what to do with this. Because obviously if it's the bottom bearings, what you can do is put some blocks under the front wheels, so this is higher, and then lower the mast down, and then the bottom bearings will poke out the bottom, so you can change them without taking those off, basically. But because it's the top bearings, I can't do that. I need to remove the whole mast. So what I'm thinking is, that alarm, that sensor goes off all the time, James. Uh, what I'm thinking is, to disconnect them chains there and there, disconnect them two, and then disconnect this here, leave them side shift pipes connected, just take that pin out there, move that, and then disconnect that and move that out of the way, and then heighten it up, and then hopefully this carriage will go up and then leave that bit on the floor. If you know what I mean. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know whether it's going to work or not. Never done it before, so. Uh, if you know an easy way, put it in the comments, because I don't. That's what I'm going to try anyway. <laughs> I better get some tools, haven't I? I was going to take that frame off there a lot and then leave them two connected. But all I'll do is disconnect these two and disconnect them, the side shift ones, because the shunt piss out oil unless I do the side shift. Uh, and then it's less of a faff, in it? So basically, all I'm going to disconnect is them four parts there, that one, and that one, a nut at the bottom and a nut at the bottom, and then lift the mast up. That should stay there, and the mast uh, rail should go up. That's the plan, anyway. Come on, let's get some spanners. Now I'm parked closer, you see. There's a method in the madness, so I don't have to walk. There she flies. You've got that tapered one on first, then you've got the lock knot, and then you've got a split pin through it. Not actually through the pin, the split pin is. Now I've just got to take the other one off. I just need to remove that split pin out there, look. It was tight. Right, that's them off. I don't think it'll lift it, will it? Not without me going to forklifting. Oh, fuck it. Let's just start it off. Let's try it. I don't know. I don't think it'll work.
You've definitely had the wear out of them, Jamie, haven't you? Lovely. What was happening, it was going on top of his mast there. It was resting on top of his mast there when he went up. So we had to like nudge it to get it to go back. Well, you can see why, can't you? Because them bearings are kaput, aren't they? Got a bit of play in it, hasn't it? Might be worth getting four, might it, if they're cheap. And it's done then, isn't it? Right, I need to remove this now. And then Dave's going to take it uh, to get it uh, a new one because he didn't know what size it was. He needed a template as, as a uh, to take with him. So I'm going to try and take one of these off. That in a bearing is uh, broke apart anyway. I was going to get me hammer and cheers one, cheers went off. Needs a bit of fettling with a grind a lot. You know, with me flappy disc. Mm. Try and get the other side. Oh, bit rough, innit? Yeah, might not be the cleverest thing that might be. Look, I turned it round, look, because I couldn't get in there, look. So I turned it round and, oh dear. Bee-boo. May as well have some dinner now, aren't I? Dave's got to take that, but he ain't back with the uh, mighty white yet. So I'll have some dindins. Good excuse to have dinner, isn't it? You don't need much of an excuse to have dinner, though, do you? You freaking don't. <laughs> Is it wake up time? Wake up time. <laughs> Woo! There's our David. Have you done all your job, is Dave? Ah, oh, cushed a little new. I've got your bearings off here. In the where forklifters. They're all to pieces. Is there any... Uh, the bit battered, Dave. Any markings on them? I don't clean them. Yeah, there should be a number, shouldn't there? Good thinking. Come on then, get off my arse. Let's go think of this. <laughs> <laughs> There's Mighty White for the full service. Expensive as well. I told Dave how expensive all this engine oil is and filters. It nearly fell out. Look, that's it. Look. <laughs> it nearly fell over, he did. I know. How much is about £500 worth, wasn't it? I might want to go with invoice now. You've had it, sir. Come on, I'm going to sort these bearings out, Dave. Okay. Sort these bearings out. And I need some oil tubs as well, then. There's the numbers, look, guys, on there, on the sides here. Faded a bit, but. We'll sort it. Yeah. I'll do my to white then, Dave, yeah? Yes, yeah, sir, I'll be out. All right, I'll leave this out here, Dave. Yeah. All right. Got to change that air dry cartridge. Change the engine oil, change the fuel filters, change the air filter. I think they've got me a pollen filter as well. One of the things that you never hardly change, do you? Not very often, anyway. There's your pollen filter. Ooh, look at that. One's changing, doesn't it? Good job, Dave, don't get hay fever. Wow. 
wild gone, isn't it? Now that big job's done, I'm going to get the cab up now. Make sure the cab's safe though. We don't want no one through a windscreen, do we? Oh, that's especially. Got some junk in here, ain't I? Got some junk in the trunk. I'm gonna get covered here, aren't I? I've just put a bit of oil around that seal just to help it seat. And then it's easier and all to go it off. Yeah, whatever you do, don't over tighten them tops. Obviously it's meant to be 25 newton meters. I know I didn't use a torque wrench, but I didn't over tighten them. Yeah, the oil filter didn't come with an O-ring for there, look, which is a shame. Never mind, we'll just have to go back in a minute. Did you hear that? Can't over tighten that one. It's got a little clicky thing in it. I've brought a vending foil. Look, that's handy, isn't it? That's handy, that is. It's good, that. Good idea, that. Uh, I'm going to have to Google roughly how much this has, isn't it? There's, you have to go on the dash you're doing it, it'll uh, tell you like plus two litres or whatever when you get nearer the point. 32 litres, it says on the Google. That'll be 30. And that'll be the two. I'm just going to get the primer pump, uh, the fuel primer pump, a bit of a gwins. Right, just check his engine on the computer first, make sure it's all right. Right, there, look, radio signs on. Them little pages there, if you keep pressing them, look. Keep pressing it, 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 keep pressing it. There, on that one. And then you go up and down on these little arrows until you reach. Ah, there it was, engine oil, okay. Right, now I'm just going to turn her over. Oh, 
while it's on tick over, you just want to check for visual leaks. All good in the hood. I'll stop it, then we'll check the oil level, make sure the oil levels are right when it's stopped again. Been, when it's been stopped again for a bit, I should say. I'm just going to grease these threads in here. So if these get tight, then it runs off uh, the insert that goes into the plastic. Right, I'm going to change the gearbox oil now. There's the bottom bung there. And then there's the level bung. Oh, oh, that don't look very good. There, look, but it don't look very good. Mm. I bet I've got the wrong Allen key and all I have, and I bastard. Now I'm going to try and undo that side bung first because if I can't undo that I'll be pissing the wind draining all the oil out of it so I can't get it back in again. Yeah, that's why they've came unstuck there because that pump's in the way to get your Allen key in. Fuck me, it looks round off and all. I, I can't get my socket on it, look. Pissed up, look. I might just try a normal Allen key. I ain't got an Allen key, but I have got that lock and a 14 mil. What I've done in the past with these bungs like this, if it's uh, been round off, is weld a nut to the outside of it. Which is what we might have to do to this. Oh, where's that gone? As it fuckers like it's round off, isn't it? <laughs> now, we're gonna have to weld a nut to it. She's well round off. Can you see that lot there as well? It looks as though somebody's tried to chisel it before. You know what I mean? He'll have to, uh, he'll have to either come to my workshop and I'll weld a nut on it, or he'll have to get it done around here, won't he? Somewhere local and weld a nut on it to undo it. Because you, you, you need that because that's where you topped up from and that's your level as well. So uh, without that, you can't really check the level. I should think you can drop the gearbox oil out of it and then top it up at another bung up the top if you knew the right a literage. But that doesn't help your inspections, does it? And it's got a bit of a leak look there. So we need that bung out, out to keep an eye on it, the level. So either way, it needs doing, doesn't it? Never mind. I thought when I saw it, I thought, ooh, someone's either, they've ran that off and they've managed to get it out or they've tried to get it undone and thought, ooh, and left it. <laughs> Aren't they? Right, I'll change the air dryer cartridge. There's the air dryer on the near side. I'll get my little chain and I'll undo that. Check the engine oil again. Yeah, okay. I don't like these electronic ones. You can't beat a visual dipstick, can you? I was speaking to someone the other day and they said, uh, I was talking to her about these dipsticks. Like, what, what's it like about not having a dipstick in it? And he said that he had one where the dipstick, it had one under the cab, but obviously the drivers don't check because it's under the cab. But it has got one, uh, oh, hang on, oil level. Three litres now it needs. Yeah, uh, he was saying it, it had an electric one like this, but the electric one was saying it was okay. But on, his, on what, while he was looking under the cab, he thought he'd dip it, 
and it won't have piss all in it hardly. So it just shows you done it, eh? The electric thing said it's fine, and then obviously it wasn't, was it? I best topped up with oil then, aren't I? Okay. Mm. Dave's new mode of transport lot. <laughs> you don't like it in there. <laughs> it's got radar. How much weight does it carry? Can I use that instead of my van? <laughs> <laughs> that cost him two pounds a day, he was just saying, to travel here. And obviously it takes him 20 minutes in a car. Three quid now, I know, yeah, it's costing him more now. It costs him half hour in a it takes him half hour in a car and it takes him what how long does it take in that? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes in that. Because obviously Nottingham and it's snarled up a tree, isn't it? Look at it like that there. It's going to take me off. I'll just go out of place. <laughs> the door. I know. Just it. <laughs> oh, it's even got a light on it. Oh, tyre rubber. <laughs> You'll get billed for that. <laughs> right, I'll sit there. I'm going. I'll, yeah. Yeah, give us a ring, Dave. I'll ring you up. See you You'll get home before me. <laughs> Yeah, Dave's dug out a MIG welder, what he got given him by one of his subscribers. And uh, the only thing, we've just tried it, the only thing it is, the wire speed don't go down, so the wire speed's a bit fast, and it ain't got no gas. So I'm going to bring the gas from my place uh, to do that, to weld that nut on that bung. Uh, and I'm going to do that when I come back and do these bearings on this forklift. And now I'm going to get snarled up in all this traffic. Beautiful. So I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Woohoo! See you later. Have a good week. Woohoo! Bloody good show. What a good show. Go on, mate. I'll be ages. No worries, man. Thank you, mate.